Hello everyone, my name is Jeff Giosson. Uh, this is my very first video on this channel. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, and today I think it's very important that we talk about, as my first video, talk about Steam Tags. It's one of the most important things that you can do for your game um, to, to give exposure to your game on Steam. So Steam has no idea about your game when you first upload it. You have to tell Steam's algorithm what your game is about. And one of the best ways to do that is to tag your game, tag your game properly so that Steam knows where to show your game, uh, who to show it to more importantly, potential customers. So there's a strategy to it. And I thought it would be very important as my first video to show you uh, what I do to tag a game. And if you have any comments, any tips, any uh, suggestions, uh, please leave a please leave a comment. Email me um, on Twitter, um, and I'd be happy to help you. So let's get started. So who am I, and why should you listen to me? Well, my name is Jeff Chiasson. I'm the founder of Meridian Four. Uh, we started uh, this company in 2004. Uh, there was no Steam then. We we were publishing on into retail in North America: Walmart, Target, Best Buy, GameStop, all those. And then in 2006, when Steam came along, uh, we saw the writing on the wall and went on to Steam, publishing our first game on, on Steam in 2007. So I've been with Steam for a very long time. I've seen many ups and downs of Steam, which we can get into in another video. Um, but I want to give you a little bit of background. I started this new channel to help devs uh, understand things that I see repeatedly over, over the years um, where, where devs get hung up. And I'm hoping that you find this information useful. And uh, the future videos will be about Steam, about indie business, uh, business in general, marketing, games, let's plays. Um, I'm even thinking, well, not thinking, I'm going to develop um, on my own little small game as a test. It's always something that's interested me and in a way intimidated me. So I wanna, I wanna knock that off the bucket list, if you will. That'll be for a future video. Uh, but for now, we're going to talk about Steam Tags. So why tagging your game is important. Like I said before, Steam's algorithm, um, you have to tell the algorithm what your game is all about. Once the algorithm understands what your game is about, it will be able to show your game to potential customers. And that's, that's the goal here. We want your game to get in front of as many customers as possible um, that will potentially lead to sales. The other important uh, point for tagging your game is Steam regularly runs uh, curated sales. Well, they'll have uh, you know a uh, precision platformer sale, and if you've tagged your game with precision platformer, well, you'll be invited to that sale. Let's take a quick tour of tags on on a typical Steam page. So this game, one of ours, is called The Silent Age. Um, you'll see at the bottom, there's a little plus button. It'll show, depending on this, the length of the tag, it'll show uh, anywhere from four to five, maybe three to five tags. If you click the plus sign, it, it opens up a window on the Steam page, where on the left side, you will see uh, tags that uh, users have, uh, gamers have entered for that game. And on the right, the tags that you've entered for your game. Now, it's important in, to see the tags that you've entered to be logged into your uh, developer account well I mean any account but for what we're talking about today you should be logged into your developer account the account that uh, has access to Steamworks so you will see on the left what users have entered and what on the right what uh, you have entered now this is important information because as your game gets exposed to thousands of players they will start to tag your game uh, and maybe maybe in a way that you might not have thought of so we'll get to this later, but it's important to, to check on this uh, pretty regularly. Uh, I, I, I typically do it before a big sale, um, but you know, put it in your calendar once a month, uh, maybe once every two months, and particularly before a big sale to go in and just, just retag your game. So first things first, um, as always, when, when dealing uh, with, with everything Steam, you should, you should go to the Steam documentation first and just read read all about it. Uh, Steam is pretty transparent, not necessarily with what their algorithm is doing, although you can kind of understand, um, you know, where they're putting their importance. 
but they're very transparent in 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 what you should be doing uh, marketing wise tagging wise etc and they say right at the top of the steam pa tag page that your first five tags are the most important you can tag up to 20 but the top five have way more weight than the bottom 15. so it's very important for those top five tags to accurately um, represent your game never lie never use a tag that you think is going to be a high value tag like okay there's a little bit of strategy in my game there's a oh well you know a little bit of action here no because if you if you lie and your game is presented to a customer that is looking for that particular uh, style of game um, you're gonna you're gonna piss them off and it'll probably lead, lead to negative reviews or refunds so what's my strategy for tagging a game I'll look at the competitors I'll tag, I'll, I'll record by hitting that plus button. I'll take all the tags that have been entered for their game. Now, I can't see the developer uh, tags that they've added, but I can, you know, I, I can see all the tags that users have added, and that gives you a pretty good indication. And I'll mark them down in the spreadsheet like you see here. And then with that, I'll start to see patterns. And what I want is, is for the game that I'm working on, in this case, the Silent Age, I want it to be associated with these games. So you, you'll start to see patterns like, okay, there's adventure, uh, there's point and click, there's a uh, puzzle, uh, you know, depending on your game. Um, I'm a massive fan of Grim Fandango. It's, it's, I love that game. So comedy, story rich, uh, you know, sci-fi in the case for Silent Age would work very well as well. You can see a lot of indie here. Um, we can get into that into another video, uh, but indie, action, adventure, um, you know, strategy, RPG, these are very uh, busy tags, especially indie. I mean, I can, I'll, I'll, in another video, I'll show you that, you know, there's, I think indie tag is the most used tag on Steam. So you probably don't want to use it. Um, I wouldn't recommend using the indie tag. You'll just get lost. Anyway, so... You notice patterns, you start, um, and then you, you fill out your tags uh, with, with tags that will make sure that you are shown associated with these games on the Steam page. Now, if you go to the Steam page, you scroll down, there's a more like this section. You want your game to be, you want, in this case, the Silent Age to appear in uh, the, the more like this section of Don't Escape four days to survive. And likewise, when someone's on Don't Escape, four days to survive, you want the Silent Age to appear in that page is more like this section. So, well, I'll show you later um, in, a, in a, probably the next slide, uh, what we're gonna, how we're gonna do all this. But it's important to um, kind of go back to this, like I mentioned before, uh, regularly and and just make sure the tags make sense. And as new games come out, maybe there's a new competitor that makes more sense. And you, you, basically, that's why there's a date here. So you can go back and change things and see what you've done before. And that'll give you data to analyze if this is working or not, which we'll get to. So the next thing to do is summon the wizard, not me, the tag wizard. So you log into your partner account, uh, you select your game, you go to the edit store page, and you scroll down to about midway, there's a tag section. You just click that button and you go through the tag wizard. I can't show you this because it's uh, confidential. Um, so I'm just, I hope you'll, I mean, you should understand this, um, but let's, you launch the tag wizard and you go through the steps, you tag your game and make sure at the end, um, there's a section where you can add tags and you can go back to this section and you can see where um, perhaps you didn't think of psychological horror or detective. There's a section where you can enter those things uh, to make sure that it's part of the wizard and then you can re-rank the tags, which we'll get into now. So this is the end of the tag wizard. So once you've gone through all the steps, you can see um, there's, there's 20 tags here. It only shows, I believe 17 until I have to scroll. But the top five are the most, most important. So you can, there's a few things you can do. When you get to this page, Steam will just pump out tags saying, okay, based on what you've entered, 
here's some tags. Then you can, if you want, you just hit suggest prioritization and it'll re-rank the tags based on something going behind the scenes where it thinks these, will, these tags make more sense for your game. What I like to do is, yeah, I hit suggest just to see what happens. And then I go back to this and I start taking tags and I start rearranging the tags in the wizard until I see a game, at least one game in this section, the similarly tagged games, until I see at least one of the games that I want to target in that list. So on the, on the right here, uh, point and click, adventure, puzzle, all these tags, you can click on them and rearrange them any way you want. So I rearranged these tags until, like I said, I saw a, t a game that I want to target, which I did. Don't starve. It's right there. And it's great because it's actually the first game on my, my list. Had, you know, had I got two or three more, that would have been perfect, but I'm happy with this. So once you're happy, you hit publish. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to rearrange all the tags on the right because your developer tags outrank user tags. That's very important. So that's why it's good to do this very frequently, well, not very frequently, regularly, that's the better word, because your tags will outrank users' tags. Um, and in some cases, it, for some reason, it doesn't happen with Silent Age. I have to ask Steam about that. But for other games that I've worked on, when you re-tag with your developer account, you overwrite the user-defined tags. So you basically flush the tags that you don't want to see. Like, let's say somebody, for whatever reason, in the silent age said it was, uh, they put a tag for cute, or they put a tag for anime. Doesn't make sense. I could overwrite those tags. So that's very important. So you've published your tags. You're happy. You've recorded these tags in that spreadsheet with the date to make sure uh, that you know the next time you do it, the tags that you've used. So let's wrap it up. So you've recorded the tags to your, your game. You've obviously published them. You've recorded them. You've noted the date um, in, the, in that spreadsheet. Like I've said, you run the tag wizard regularly, particularly and, and most importantly, before big sales. And then we'll get into this in another video. Um, you start analyzing the effects of these tags. And it's Steam gives you the capability to look at, um, you know, the, the impressions the game is getting, the views, the click-through rate. And then you can also see wish lists and you can see sales and then you can make a conversion ratio. And then you can chart all that and see if you're having an effect. Now, I wouldn't suggest making a ton of changes because um, you won't know what's working and what doesn't work. But you can make one, maybe two changes, wait a week, reanalyze the data, and take it from there. We'll get into that into, the, into another video. Like I said, like the title of this video is part one. There's going to be multiple parts to it. And what I'd like to do is uh, take these spreadsheets that I use and just kind of make template versions. And I'll, I'll add download links so you, can, um, so you can use them. You don't have to create them. I mean, the nice thing about the tag sheet that I have is I have a data sheet that has all the tags in it, so you don't have to think about it. Um, so what's the goal of all this? Well, the goal of it is to get your game in front of potential customers, period. That's it. Um, it's all about selling your game. At the end of the day, you want to make money to pay your bills, put food on the, on the table for your family. Um, so you want to make sure your game is in front of somebody that will purchase your game. So in the case for the Silent Age, I don't want the Silent Age to appear on Doom's page. I don't want it to appear on uh, Half-Life's page. Those are great games, but the customer of that game is not necessarily the customer of Silent Age. If I get my game onto Grim Fandango's page or uh, Day of the Tentacle or, you know, kind of, you know, I like those classic ones, as you can tell, or Don't Starve or Don't Escape, sorry. 
those customers will be more likely to purchase my game. So that's the goal. I thank you for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it. It's my first one. Um, you know, it's getting out of my comfort zone, but we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna see where this goes. We're gonna go down a path and uh, we're gonna adjust and pivot as, as, as needed. Please subscribe and like. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, this is also plays on YouTube's algorithm that helps grow the channel. If you have any other tips, um, any suggestions, any questions, please leave a comment below and I'll, we will, I will answer all of them. I will do my best to answer all of them. You can also find me on Twitter and what links will be in the description. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.